Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. And in this video, I'm heading to the South Downs in Hampshire. And it isn't really for you. This one's for me. Let me explain. When I started the channel, uh, it was really just for my own purposes. It was to kind of remember my location shoots and perhaps catalogue uh, any minor improvements in my capabilities as a landscape photographer. I put them on YouTube because it was a, a decent place to store them so I could watch them back easily, uh, but also so that the odd family member and one or two friends might be interested and take a look. Little did I know that a few other people would get interested in the sort of rubbish that I churn out. Anyway, um, as time went by and more and more people started tuning in, of course, as I was making videos, they then became for you uh, the audience who I'm extremely grateful for. Uh, but this particular video is kind of back to just doing it for myself. It's a bit rough around the edges um, and it's just a, a few holiday snaps. So these images were from a boat trip around the harbour at Portsmouth uh, and I made really good use of the in-body stabilisation on my OM1 uh, on a rolling boat. Uh, but I wanted to take some images, I wanted something to remember it by. Both of the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers were berthed, so they were worth a shot, and of course the spinnaker. In particular, I wanted to get a shot of the spinnaker that wasn't a standard shot that you see from land. So I was able to shoot it face on from the boat. Anyway, uh, those are my holiday snaps. I did go out the following morning onto the South Downs to a location called Old Winchester Hill, which is a Bronze Age hill fort uh, and a fabulous location. Well, this really is an absolutely spectacular landscape. It's not often I come to the south of England, but when I'm visiting friends, it's well worth dragging myself out of bed at 5 a.m., especially on a beautiful summer's morning like this. The sun has just put in an appearance uh, over the ridge to my right, and I'm shooting in this direction with the sun over my shoulder, having to be careful not to get my shadow in the shot found an old dead tree which is a pretty standard sort of image uh, and doesn't really take advantage of this fantastic landscape but I'll be doing something with that in a little while. For this image um, what I've done is I've positioned my main subject up in the top third and used beautiful dry grasses uh, and uh, little bits of ragwort little splashes of yellow here and there as, as an area of negative space to lead you up to the subject. It's a pretty standard composition. The only thing I had to be really careful of, I've got a branch that runs out uh, to the top left and I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of room in that top corner but without having too much of the sky, it's solid blue, it's pretty boring. All it's doing is providing me with a backdrop for my main image. But as I say, what I particularly like are these beautiful dry grasses in the foreground and I wanted to take advantage of that. Uh, so I've got the camera down really low uh, and my foreground is quite blurred up until I get to the main tree. Uh, one of the things that I'm having a problem with, I haven't brought my pro glass with me because I wasn't sure if I was going to come out for some landscapes. I thought I'd just be wandering around Portsmouth Dockyard taking holiday snaps. So uh, I've got my 14 to 150 on, which is great because it gives me the, the reach, but it doesn't allow me to soften the foreground as much as I would like if I could open the lens out to 2.8. But you can't have everything. I'm quite happy to be out and about with a camera on a morning like this. If I get one or two images, so much the better. 
Now, let me just quickly interrupt here. I do have a very quick Photoshop tip, um, a little technique that I use sometimes when I want to enhance differential focus. Uh, sometimes I just don't have the aperture to achieve what I want in camera. And there's a sneaky little workaround that I sometimes use. It's pretty commonly known, but I thought I'd quickly share it with you anyway. So here we are with my raw file. I haven't done much processing on this yet. You'll see the finished article at the end of the video. What I'm going to do is just duplicate this layer uh, with Command J, Control J on a Windows machine. Uh, and then I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And the reason for that is so that I can amend the changes that I make uh, to the filter that I'm going to apply. So we go up to filters and then I want blur. I'm going to use Gaussian blur. And you can see here in the pop up window that I've got it currently set to four pixels. So what I'm going to do is just sort of change that to a little bit more so that you can see it more easily. Let's change that to eight. I'm going to OK that. I've now blurred my image, as you can see. So I'll apply a layer mask. I'm going to invert the layer mask to make the entire layer visible. Command I or Control I. And now my underlying layer is now visible. So what I'm going to do now is just paint in the bit that I want to be blurred. So I'm going to hit B for brush. And what you need is a nice big brush with um, a very uh, feathered profile. And the reason for that is that you want the transition to be as subtle as you can get it. I'm just going to brush across the image, across the bottom of the image there like that. Now, as you can see, I've made the bottom third of the image extremely blurred, uh, probably too blurred. And that's where the uh, smart object comes in. I can click on the label for Gaussian blur revert to that, change it back to about four pixels, which is what I would use for real. OK that. And you can see that this very close foreground is now just ever so slightly more blurred than it was in camera, uh, enhancing that differential focus effect. Just one last important thing to bear in mind is that uh, this is all about the distance from the lens. So if I painted straight across the image, these grasses here would also be blurred, but they're actually further away. So the area that you want to blur needs to be based on how far away it is from the camera. And in this case, it's kind of a, a diagonal line round about there. Anyway, uh, hopefully that was helpful if you've never seen it before. Uh, it, I may or may not deploy it in the final edit of this image. You have to wait and see. Back to the South Downs. I'm having to work quite quickly on this image because it's very dependent on the fact that the light hasn't yet got down into the valley in front of me, but it's catching the tops of the trees in the copse right in the centre of this little depression in the landscape. But I've also got some layers in front of me. I've got the beautiful grasses in the foreground again. Um, and then I've got the light just catching the tops of a couple of tree lines then the cops, but the background is still in deep shadow. So I'm, this whole image is about trying to capture uh, a wide vista without it looking like a holiday snap, but with layers of light uh, separated by deep shadows across the image. Again, there's nothing to use in the sky at all. Um, I've still got plenty of time in terms of golden hour, but uh, the light is changing fast on the ground and so I was keen to take advantage of that. I'm not sure what I'll be able to do once the sun gets up another 30 or 45 minutes because the light then is very even and even though I mean the views are stunning it's it's a beautiful spot and I'm really glad I came out that's when it starts to get challenging for photography because you don't have any sort of separation and it's it's kind of difficult to make an image that would be any different to the sort of thing you might take with an iPhone. Um, now that's not to say that a, a, an image of, well, look, what a beautiful view, I'd like to be able to remember it, 
that's absolutely fine. But I'm trying to elevate what I do here, which is the whole point of getting up early and calling myself a photographer. I'm just starting to get towards the end of the usable light now. Uh, we're about an hour and a half after sunrise, so I've kind of stretched the definition of golden hour a little bit. I had hoped to try and make use of some of these tree lines with the contrasting yellows in the fields, and there were some nice uh, areas with long shadows, but they're now shortening rapidly, and I couldn't find a composition that I really liked but I was determined to get a shot which kind of demonstrates the, the wide vistas from up here, uh, despite the fact that it end up looking like a holiday snap. So this is the closest I've been able to find and actually quite happy with this one. Um, what I've done is, again, I've used quite a lot of negative foreground space, which um, kind of leads you into it and, and it pushes the, uh, the background further away. But because I've got a sort of footpath curving round, not an S curve, just half an S curve. Um, and then I've got quite a nicely side lit hawthorn bush in my mid ground, which kind of takes your eye across out then to the distance and it runs right out to the horizon, I don't know, 20 miles away, according to the uh, information thing just over there. What I've also got in the distance is a little row of dark trees because the, the light is behind them. So I'm seeing the shadow side, but behind them is a brighter field. So they stick out this, it's like a little row of uh, pom-poms uh, along just in front of the horizon. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. Uh, but that caught my eye as I was walking up here. I thought, what can I do with that? So I've kind of, engineered a composition with a, a leading foreground, a nice interesting side-lit bush and a row of shadow trees in the distance. We'll see how it works out, but I kind of quite like it. Anyway, um, yeah, I could well be all done now. I'm not going uh, to give up just yet, but we'll see. Well, I've walked all around the hill fort and now I'm up on the summit. It's 648 feet, according to the little information plaque. And it is an absolutely beautiful view. I can see all the way from Chichester Harbour in the east, right across to Southampton in the west and over to the Isle of Wight. But I'm now struggling for anything that leaps out at me for photography. The, uh, the light is now quite even. There are some lines and shapes made by the hedgerows because we've been having a really bad drought. And of course, it's much worse here in the south of England than up where I live in North Wales. So the fields are really parched, which creates that nice contrast in color, but it's still dependent on the light. And that's the thing with photography. You just can't get away from it. These lovely views look great, but when you're trying to make an image, that light is all important. And without it being just right, you just know the image isn't really going to work very well. So I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm thinking I'm all done. And I was thinking, well, do I try and wring another image out of this? So I've got something to share with you. But as I said at the beginning, this is kind of a personal one. This is one just for me, so I don't care. The B-roll footage is me to remind myself how it looked up here. Six o'clock in the morning and I'm in a t-shirt and it's, I don't know, 24 degrees. And it's wonderful. All of those times when I'm battling the elements in North Wales, getting a dramatic shot, but relatively uncomfortable. I'll just remind myself of how it felt here this morning. So I think I might leave it here for this one. Um, I'll show you the couple of images that I've got from this morning. Uh, but.
that's it. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Uh, even though it's been a bit personal to me, I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe and join me next time. Cheers.